Alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah, our gratitude to Allah for having able us to be here in a state of good health and iman, to finish reciting the Virud salam uh, that we hope that we receive the peace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for these are some of the uh, athkar that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would recite uh, every mornings and afternoons and uh, after asr. And so if we're not able to recite it uh, right after Fajr is fine, we can recite it at least before Asr. If not, at least we can recite it from Asr till before Fajr, that's another time. And if not, at least once a day, this uh, are sufficient for us in this time, this day and age, where there are thousand and one uh, reasons for us uh, that would, you know, uh, be dangerous and harmful if not for the physical self, at least for the spiritual self. And that's the reason, the reason for that reason, you know, to seek the protection. So like I've said before, in order for us to see change in our life, the first thing is we must be um, constant and try to not let go of our du'as, for it is a state that we're asking Allah to remove the bala from our life. Or the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned that when a du'a is made, the du'a would wrestle with bala until qiyamah. Until qiyamah. So this is definitely something which if we sit and do every day, the bala that has already descended, then with this blessings bit by bit, it will be removed. And the bala that is to come as well, with these blessings, inshallah, it will be held up until yawmul qiyamah. And all of the du'as that we recite will be used yeah, as a dalil for us on the day of judgment until we meet Allah and it will be used to cover up all of our shortcomings that we have in this dunya and for sure we have four shortcomings and that will be inshallah as a way for us to enter Jannah inshallah Ameen Ameen Ya Rabbul Alameen okay if you're still wondering yes I am still in Malaysia uh, inshallah tomorrow I'll be back inshallah yeah. Alhamdulillah, yesterday we spoke, uh, we finished the first live. Eh? I have not uploaded yesterday's video, inshallah, I will try to upload it after this, inshallah. Eh? Today, inshallah, we'll go through the second live. Eh? So, the many other lessons, the previous lessons before, since the first day of Ramadan has already been uploaded. So, if you would like to, yeah, any uh, review back what we have studied and what we have gone through, inshallah, uh, it's, uh, please look through our YouTube page yani and there they are the previous feel free to share them if you found them to be uh, yani helpful okay. um, yesterday my wife uh, was asking what do I mean uh, because I mentioned about one thing then I went to the other and that's what happens when you there's no physical people around eh? so it's difficult <laughs> I still find it um, we had to teach just virtual lessons. Um, one of the her question was, I said something about inheriting knowledge, number one, and then I I I went into another topic. Yani, um, one of the signs of Akhir Zaman is that there will be lesser people with progeny, which means the fathers do not carry the descendants in their loins. And then I continued by saying that in Akhir Zaman there will be a lot of people who are aged, very, very old, very old. And reason being is because uh, not many of them uh, would have Zuriyat. So like what we're seeing this day and age, it's, it's some of the signs. So one way to interpret Akhir Zaman, the sign of Akhir Zaman first, is do not say, uh, we do not take this as a prediction. Or oh, this is happening means this is going to happen, Akhir Zaman is going to happen. No, we must first take this as form of knowledge. Yeah, any? Now, uh, how do we interpret this? How do we understand this? And uh, it's really important uh, because without knowledge, we would misinterpret things, uh, be it about Akhir Zaman or even about Fiqh. Uh, so it is important to constantly be seeking knowledge. Uh, and what we mean by this is that Akhir Zaman comes in phases. And in fact, this has happened since the time of the Prophet and uh, where he says, between me and the end of times is this far. So, which means we're very, we're very close. And in fact, the biggest sign of Akhir Zaman is Rasul Sallallahu himself. So, what we should be doing is that we should stick to the way uh, that the Prophet has left for us. 
and having basic things that we do, basic myriad that we have in the mornings and the evenings are, are important, mashallah, and they keep us grounded and it makes us understand and it opens up ways for us to, to seek knowledge, to better understand our journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's what I'm what I meant is that that's number one. Number two is that um I've meant that people from the loins of their fathers they inherit a certain knowledge. Now what knowledge do I mean? The knowledge of Allah to be Rabbiko. Yeah, need the knowledge of returning back to the point that we took our covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Imam al-Haddad is also meaning. The ruh, the spirit, has an imprint of this. The day that it met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf, eh, verse uh, Surah 7, 172, that Imam al-Haddad himself quotes, Allah to be rabbikum, Am I not your Lord? And then we replied, Verily, Ya Allah, you are. Now, what does this mean? This means that we have already affirmed Tawheed in our hearts. There's a lot of other narrations that pertains back to that day, and uh, the people who, who took it, the people who did not, you know, all these kind of things. We won't go into such details for now. And this is the basic assess that all of our lives are trying to return back to. The affirmation that verily Allah is our Lord. So when we we read through these lives of men by Imam al-Haddad, it is actually a process of reaffirming that process again. Allah will ask, am I not your Lord? Am I not your Lord? When we are in this state, when we are in another state, a state that is likable to us, favorable, a state that is less favorable, all of it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it is important for us to always be reaffirming back our states by saying, Yes, Ya Allah, you are my Lord. And the best of dua is Alhamdulillah. Afdalu dua is Alhamdulillah. The best dua in all circumstances and situation is Alhamdulillah. So is something that we must always tell ourselves and remind ourselves in every state they were in to always say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So that was what I wanted to say yesterday. And I hope I did not confuse any of you, inshallah. So we'll continue now to the second life. And even this, we have gone through quite a bit. We're now at page 16, inshallah. So we've gone through the first two verses of the Quran briefly. And we've created man from a product of clay. Then we've placed him as a drop in a safe lodging. And then, then we made a lump of the bones. Then we covered the bones with flesh and then brought him forth eh, to another creation. So blessed be God, the best of creators. So this is the Alaq. Imam Haddad will briefly explain this in the following paragraphs. There are also many hadith on this subject. One was one of the most comprehensive being that of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu an, with him, and it's recorded in Sahih Bukhari wa Muslim, and in Shaykhain, Sahihain. The message of the Prophet وسلم, the message of God وسلم, upon whom blessings and peace told us. And he is the truthful whose veracity God confirmed. Any one of you will have had his created existence brought together in his mother's womb. So now, what happened is, we all travel in the loins of our fathers. And this traveling from Sayyidina Adam alayhi wasalam, Sayyidina Seed, and then it continue, continue, continue to all of our respective brothers, uh, fathers, and then from the respected uh, loins of our fathers, we then being put into the most safe place, yani the, the womb of our mothers. Yeah, the womb of our mothers. And this is what the hadith says. Any one of you will have had his existence, created existence brought together in his mother's womb. So this is the place, the two meeting of the semen, the drop of water, and the blood, the alaq. And the drop, as a drop, nutfah for 40 days. So we will stay there uh, in the womb of our mothers for 40 days, then a sticky attached cloth, alaq. Then it becomes a clot of blood. For 40 days, then a sticky attached uh, for the same period, 40 days, then a piece of flesh, mudhagala. And for the same period after which God sends his angels to grow into the spirit, the ruh, into him. 
So after this outlook, this process, the first to be created in the womb of our mothers is our heart. So the heart will be created first, the alak, the mudghala. This goes back, fi jasadi adam mudghala, in the, in the body of Adam is a piece of flesh. So remember, what is first created is your heart, not your brain. So it is really important for us to take care of our hearts. Because that's the first thing that will be quite, that is required for us to enter Jannah, Qalbun Salim, a heart that is safe. So the first thing that is created is our heart. And that's why when you go to the doctors, the first thing they look out for is the pumping of the, the beating of the heart of the, of the child and our thing. And the same period after which God sends the angels to blow the spirit, the ruh, into him. So during this period, the mother would experience, yeah, would experience whether she is aware of it or not, of the angel blowing into her belly, her womb, the spirits. And this is a very beautiful, important time. It is about uh, 40, 40, 40, 40, about four months uh, around there. Now there's a khilafi yeah, about uh, uh, yeah, any abortion, um, our scholars are all against it, uh, traditionally as well. And uh, there are people who say after four months cannot, that is actually an opinion. Uh, you cannot abort after four months, that is actually more of an opinion. But most of the consensus is that they are against abortion, and uh, Allah knows best. Eh? I just wanted to point that out from this. Now, this is also important that during this time, this early four periods uh, time of the mother is to, uh, to be making a lot of dua. And uh, to be making dua that the child is, anak, the child which has been conceived now will be someone who will serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone who will be, uh, someone who when given birth to will be useful to the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Someone that would be uh, preserving themselves in the way of the Sharia ah and the Tariqa and the Hakika and the Ma'rifa of Sayyidina Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa so these are the intentions that the mother must make while carrying this blessed, uh, while carrying the child blessedly. So this is a very important time, and we can see this, you know, in the the life stories of our mother Sayyidatina Amina radiallahu anha, the mother of the Prophet وسلم, where the light shone forth from her belly to Shams. And so this is a this is a way to show how Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was actually communicating. And in fact, Sayyidina Jibril communicated with the our blessed mother Sayyidatina Amina radiallahu anha. And, and uh, they heard the Prophet making dhikr and all these kind of things. So in the blessed womb of Sayyidatina Amina. So these are all, um, how do we say, the signs to show uh, that what we are experiencing is not just signs, it's not just biology, but it is actually the, the greatness of life being created in the womb of the mothers. And that's why mothers must always be taking care of your askar, your dhikr, be taking care of your heart, be taking care of having good intentions. The fathers as well must be making sure that you feed your wife uh, with uh, not only halal but tayyib. One of the great scholars of who were the teachers, who was the teacher of um, uh, Imam al-Ghazali, Imam al-Haramayn, it was mentioned there was once um, someone asked him a question and he paused for a long period of time. And it is the nature of Imam Muharramain that he would not take long to answer. He would answer quickly. So this amaze, uh, and it's as though the Imam, Imam was trying to refer back, refer back, refer back. And then this, uh, this brought a concern to his students. His students were like, Imam, this has never happened to you before. Why has this happened? And he, he said, well, when I was born, he said, my mother would uh, would naturally feed me with her milk. And there was one day they had a, a servant over. And the servant, because I was crying, the imam mentioned, the, I was fed with the servant's milk without my mother's knowledge. And when my father received this, he says, we were preserving you with, uh, with good 
halal uh, sustenance but now you know because of this uh, we have lost that that something is now uh, has been in impurity has now been added into you and the imam said because of that one incident it, it strikes me sometime that I am not able to recall what I have memorized. Can you imagine that, mashallah, the, the, the level the parents take just to make sure that the children eat things which are halal and not even mutashabihat, things which are uh, doubtful. So it, now it's not just about nutrition, my brothers and sisters, but at this period in time, it is about the barakah of the food that we give to our uh, pregnant mothers, those who are conceived, and the fathers as well. Even making sure that we eat as fathers, we eat the right thing when we're trying to, yeah, any, uh, to have uh, to have children uh, during the coitus period. So these are very important. It's not. Uh, which food is good for my fertility? Um, uh, omega three, omega ten. Okay, bagos. It's I mean scientifically we can't fault it, but also spiritually, what is needed is uh, uh, food, uh, spiritual food as well. And um, and I feel today we have destroyed our bodies uh, with the very weird dieting programs that we have out there. Um, what do you call that kind of intermittent fasting, um, this fasting, that fasting. So I, I believe the first process for fertility is actually cleansing. Um, first things first, the head of the mother must always be in order. It cannot be out of cycle. Um, the father and the mother both cannot have stress. This is another thing. I mean, some people have it easy, mashallah, barakallah. Some people, they have a bit of uh, struggle um, and all of this. So this is something that we have to go through, make a lot of dua, make a lot of um, sadaqah, do a lot of sadaqah. We're making sure that we eat the most uh, blessed food, not just the most nutritious. And that uh, will actually shape and mold the child. And this period, four months, uh, is where we get yeah, any of the, uh, the angels coming in and they will write the nasib of the child. Yeah? Yeah, indeed. The angel is commanded to write four words. His provision, that means the, the, the child's risky, his lifespan, his deeds, and whatever he will end up as wretched or joyful. May Allah protect us and our children and our parents and all. Four things. That means number one, his risky. His umur, his deeds, good deeds, bad deeds, and whether he will end up Jannah or Jahannam. All this is written on the forehead of the child. Yeah. By one beside, by the one beside whom there is no other God, one of you may do the works of the people of the garden until he is separated from it only by an arm's length. Yeah, any, all your life you've been doing good, and then the distance between you and Jannah is just one arm's length. Okay. And then when which has been written overtakes him, and he does the work of the people of the fire, and enters it. And one of you may do the works of the people of fire until nothing remains between him and it but an arm's length, then that which has been written overtakes him. He does the works of the people of the garden and so enters it. So what the what the hadith is trying to say is, yeah, any we should not be too uh, too confident that we're Ahl Jannah. And that's the reason why we should always do our for the, our iman and the iman of our children, the preservation of iman for ourselves and our children. Parenthood is not just about providing uh, shelter, food, external things, but parenting. Yeah? Parenting today is number one about disciplining, plu. Number two, about making fervent du'as for your children. Uh, fervent du'as for our children, so much so that um, these du'as are, are, being, are felt by our children, that they feel that their iman is being boosted, bolstered by the du'as of their parents. Not even, even before the advice has come, the du'as of the parents must be felt first. And one of the du'as that, alhamdulillah, that I've not letting go for... 
14 years alhamdulillah masyaallah 15 years because he's 14 this year Allah ma aslih dhurriyati wahdihim ila sabili rashid this is the dua that is recited by the grandfather of Sayyid Muhammad Alwi al-Maliki for his son so Alwi bin Abbas al-Maliki and for then it continues so this this dua has proven to be given birth to great imams Allahumma aslih oh Allah make it easy dhurriyati my children Allahumma aslih dhurriyati wahdihim for them to get Sabili Rashad, the way of Irshad, the way of guidance. This short dua, but it is all encompassing. Another one is the dua, um, Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina kurata ayuna wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. And this is the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi wasalam, asking Allah to make his children, his progeny, the imam of the people of muttaqin. people of taqwa so when we have children number one we have to understand that this is an amana we don't own our children allah does and this we see from the life of sultan shah abdul qadir al jilani kada sallallahu alaihi wasallam i've quoted this story many a times uh, there was once his son set out for journey to yeah, any for trading and his ship uh, with uh, on board of a ship of course the saudi travel one of the main modes of traveling transportation in the past And then news came months after that his son and his ship capsized. And the sheikh then looked down, closed his eyes and looked down, and then he says, Alhamdulillah, and he continued his class, his, his teachings. And then months later, news came saying that his son is safe and his treat was successful. And he looked down in his heart and he said, Alhamdulillah, he continued as per normal. And then the Murids asked, Sheikh, this Alhamdulillah we understand, but the, sec- the first time you said Alhamdulillah, we did not understand. Why do you say Alhamdulillah upon hearing that, uh, that the son, your son has passed away? And the Sheikh says, I was looking at my heart to see if my heart had forgotten Allah after hearing such news. I repeat, I was looking at the Sheikh Abdul Qadir in Jalani Qadir says, I was looking at my heart to see if my heart was affected by the news, affected with Allah. And I found that it was not affected with Allah and I said, Alhamdulillah. What does uh, this mean? He continued another, say, he says, each time my children are born, I tell them, I tell you, know, you are an amana from Allah. I'm taking care of you, but truly to Allah only you will return. So in that sense, he, he has done tawakkul unto Allah every time a child is born. He has four wives. Uh, the Sheikh has four. He got married at a very late age of 52. Four wives, and he has about almost 50 children, the great Sheikh. Uh, many of whom became awliya Allah salihin of their time, great scholars of their time, both men and women as well, and people who serve the deen. And this That's why we should look at the life of the awliya and how do they parent. So parenting today is not, you know, we've gone a different directions, psychological, uh, I mean, there's goodness in all of this. I'm not saying don't do that. But also don't, don't omit the, the parenting of taqwa to raise our child to be muttaqin. Because that is the, uh, one of the things that will preserve our children in this day and age. So how do we then, you know, so, way of mutaqin first when they are, after they are born they've reached a certain age you know what are the knowledge that is needed along the way from you know sayyidina ali karamullah ta'ala wajhu divides the parenting into about three phases 1 to 0 to 7 7 to 14 14 to 21 he says from 0 to 7 they are like your beloved you know you can show them the love, a lot of love, manja lah, in that sense. 7 to 14, 7 to 14 is the age of discipline. 14 to 21 is the age of companionship. And if I may say, if I may add now, I think um, this was for the youth of his time, where people were much more mature. Uh, but for the youth of today, it is uh, slightly different. So, Even if they want zero to seven, uh, as much as they are also, they need to have that love and nurturing, etc. But also the discipline must come in. Very important. 
because uh, people are getting matured later in this day and age. Uh, psycho, uh, you know, people say it's the frontal contact con cortex of the brain which develops later. And uh, people who do meditation, when I was in the US, they show reports like they said, through meditation, people can mature faster. Which means if we get our children to be closer to the Quran, to be closer to the Rasul, وسلم, to be closer with the awliya Allah Salihin in their ways earlier in the age, then they can mature faster. If not, then we have to deal with the problems of a teenager by in a 40-year-old man. Billah, may Allah protect us. So parenting it starts even from the womb. So from the womb, the mother, what the mother does, what the father does, etc. All of this would leave deep impact on the child, on the child. And so it is very important that we take care of the child and we take care of ourselves. These are very important, especially who's new on, keeping away from what's what's uh, all this. All this will have a trauma, will have a tremendous impact on on the child. So it is very important that. Uh, we 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 take care of our thoughts and our hearts, and uh, you know, Allah grant us the knowledge to do so. I mean, there are many du'as people. You bought your du'a nila, you bought to that. True, it's good. That is just one aspect of it. The other aspect is that how do you take care of yourself uh, and the child to come, inshallah. Okay, so what does this hadith also means is that, sorry, that was a long sidetrack, but I feel it was an important uh, piece of information for all of us. What this hadith also means is that we verily do not know our end. And this is part and parcel of the study of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. And that's the reason why I say it is important for us to be studying our Aqidah, Sifat Duklu, thoroughly. <clears throat> Especially the parts uh, after covering the Sifat Duklo, things 20 attributes which are compulsory for Allah. Allah wujud kidam maka mukhalafatul in hawadith qiyam hu bin nafsi wahdaniya ahadiyya. All this must be covered and how it's divided into Sifat nafsiya, salbiya, ma'niya, ma'nawiya. These four categories. All this. And then after that, the attributes uh, which are for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all prophets. And then what are the attributes, what are the qualities that are required for prophets to have? Why are they prophets? This is important in this day and age. And then talk about eschatology, um, the coming of the end of times, etc. All this death, all this is important. And in this, when we if we study it thoroughly, um, why Ahlul Sunnah believe in what we believe, then we understand yeah, and it, all of it happens with the permission, the power, and the knowledge of Allah. So we do not know our end. Only Allah knows. And that is the reason why we should always be on our guard with our imams. How, we pres we, how do we take care of our faith? First, number one, we make a lot of dua for protection of iman. Yeah? The protection of Allah, of Hafzul Iman. Yeah, there's a lot of du'as. In fact, some of it is also mentioned in Virudu Salam. Number two, we have to protect our external good deeds, yeah, any from prayers, etc., uh, zakat. So these are the good deeds done externally. Number three, we need to protect the purity of our hearts, making sure that our heart does not fall into the traps of the ego and the traps of the nafsu. This are some of the ways we ask Allah, give us khusnul khatima, good end. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam given us the, uh, yeah, any, uh, the formula. One of the easiest formula uh, to ask for a good end. One of the easiest formula is after every prayer, recite Ayatul Kursi. After every prayer, recite Ayatul Kursi. Because whoever who recites Ayatul Kursi after every prayer, the only thing that is stopping them from entering Jannah is death. And this is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, so after every prayer, recite ayat to proceed. So even if we were to die after that prayer, our next destination is Jannah, inshallah. We'll talk more about preparation of death when we get there yeah, in this book. So other, another one is dua, dua that we always recite in Rehudu Salaam. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan 
وأعوذ بك من العجز والكثل وأعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل وأعوذ بك من غلبة دين وكحر رجال This dua is also very important It's recommended by Imam Asyuti And to recite as well These are duas that will uh, Ensure that we have a good life uh, After this life inshallah. Uh, so keep to your good works Have like I have mentioned yesterday also Persevere to have good intentions Awliya Allah Salihin They uh, people who are mounted on good intentions before every act that they do, be it fasting, waking up in the morning, or entering the month of Ramadan, etc. All of this initially is to bring us out from our slumber of dunya, the world. We behave like normal people, dunya people, etc. But after we are, we understand religion, we practice it more, we have more hope in Allah. Then bit by bit, then we realize, hey, subhanAllah, what I'm actually doing is the work for eternal happiness, not for just the happiness in this, in this dunya. May Allah grant us that eternal happiness, inshaAllah. And may Allah grant us Jannah, inshaAllah. This authentic hadith contains enough eh, to put great fear into the obedient and the righteous, let alone the rebellion and the sinners. So Imam al-Haddad say, if you are reading this hadith with your iman, that it, it would have brought good fear into your heart. So this wrong fear and you know the right fear is we first need to seek knowledge. And that's what we're doing here. I believe this past many sessions, we've gone through different things, uh, different, different aspects of worship in life, different aspects of theology in life. And this is to put things into perspective upon our lives and how and what is the next step that we should take in life. So this book is really a gem, mashallah, tabarakallah. So we need to seek knowledge, number one, practice our knowledge, number two, have clear purpose that our life here is for the hereafter. And our life in the hereafter is for Allah. And that, that sums up our whole life. There's nothing else. Making the millions, uh, becoming the next CEO of another social uh, media company or something like that. You know, all this is all secondary. Why? Because your risk has already been written. Your, your illness, your feet, everything has been written. What we need now is, Ya Allah, give me the best of my end. Hosnul Khatima. And that's what we're asking for with all of our eggs. No, no use if our whole life we are teaching religion, etc., or doing this and that. But our end, Allah did not accept it. So the most important du'a after every prayer that we try to practice: Rabbana taqabbal du'ana wa salatana wa hajatana inna ka anta sabil alim. And so Allah read, accept our du'a. This is the most important, the most, most, most important, and the best is like we have read yesterday is to ask Allah, Oh Allah, give me. Jannah bila hisab. Jannah bila hisab. Jannah without accounting. There's no accounting. Straight away. And this we'll talk about when we enter the chapter of Barzakh, inshallah. So after we have been conceived, so going back, retracing our journey, we start with Sayyidina Adam alayhi wasalam. Our Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam is also there. The important roles of Nubuwa, of Rasul sallallahu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how it traveled the night, the loins, the, the roh traveled through the loins of the prophets as well, and for us through the loins of our forefathers until it reaches the loins of our fathers. And then it ran into the womb of our mothers, and then these two meet, and then it become alaq, and it become, you know, all of this, uh, etc., until it becomes a proper fetus. And then it goes through the canal of birth, and then we enter into this dunya. So that period of time that we're in our mother's womb is actually a long period of time. It is a proper phase of life. It is a proper phase of life. But sadly, we only see that phase of life when we go for the scan. Sayang. We forget that that is an important stage in life that we need to be taking care of ourselves and our children and our surroundings. So be with good people, attend the majlis of khair, always go for good gatherings and be making reading of Quran because that is actually a proper thing. Someone is living within us right now in the womb of our mothers. They are making dua, they are very pure. 
they are close with the malaika. The malaika will come and they will then, uh, yeah, any calf, and they will mold the child within the wombs of the mothers. We see it as just a DNA genetics thing, but all of those are actually the works of Malaika. Because in between, there are many things that we cannot explain. We cannot explain. We cannot explain. And these are the things that we always must remember. Yes, as much as I know it scientifically, but faith-wise, it is Allah is the one who is molding through his angels and all the blessed child that we are in. So it's a proper period of time in the womb of our mothers, and for that blessed reason, we cannot repay our mothers. And we cannot be rude to our mothers and our fathers because they took care of us even when they did not know how we would turn out. They had the host, they had good thoughts in us when we are in their wombs. So we should have good thoughts of them when they are old. That's most important. They had good thoughts of us. They took good care of us when we were in their wombs. When we are, uh, you know, we came out from the alam of roh, etc., into this dunya which is full of dangers, etc., they took care of us. So now that they are in their prime age, yeah, or whether they are not in their prime age, we should have minimum at least good thoughts of us because the easiest ticket to Jannah is through your parents. Yeah. To childhood now, man thus remains in his mother's belly until God wills him to come forth. The khilaf of ulama is that the longest a child, this is from Imam Malik himself, you've seen in the time of Medina, the longest a child has been in the belly of the, the womb of the mother was four years. According to Imam Malik, Imam Malik, Imam Malik says the four, the four years he has seen. Yeah, so now with all of these Indus, Sumer, uh, different again. So people of the past were very different. Four years, they were in mashaAllah. This is the first part of life in this world, dunya. So understand, first we are in the world, the realm of creation, yani the alam, uh, alamul Life before conception, in the uh, the life before conception, the alam roh. So he Imam Ghazali talks about creation, the roh, etc. We were all from there. So never say uh, that uh, I am just people of dunya and you know, I have no heavenly attachment, etc. Actually, we all have our heavenly origins. We all have our heavenly origins. Our guides, our teachers must show us that heavenly origins, not just um, yeah, any uh, burden as with dunya. You see, when you sit with your sheikh and your guide, his duty is to show you that heavenly origin. Everything else is secondary. Religion is to remind us we have that. But we live in a time where... Uh, People don't care about this heavenly origin because they're only fixated on dunya, which is the second phase. We study only about dunya, which is the second phase, the second part. Because we judge things by what we see physically. We don't look at things from a, a spiritual, religious point of view. And that's, what, that's what's happening to us in this day and age. And that's why we have all these problems, be it mentally, spiritually, physically, is because we only assess ourselves from our physical standing point. And may Allah open our hearts to see uh, the, the spirits within ourselves. Uh, don't wait for a spiritual crisis, then believe you have a spirit. Don't. That will be too late already. God, uh, the exalted, has mentioned the beginning of, the, of this life in his book. So Allah has mentioned this in the Holy Quran about dunya, stating how man moves from stage to stage and from one condition to the next. So Allah did not leave us unguided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left us with this guidance. Awal, Allah says, and afterward, we bring forth, bring you forth as infants. Afterwards, after the Initial creation, then Allah brought us forth as infants, then give you growth yeah, that you attain full strength. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then took care of us 
through our parents, through our teachers, through our communities, etc., until we are now as what we know as adults. Dah kuat dah, dah matang. Uh, we are either capable of goodness or destruction. May Allah forbid us from being people who destroy and sin. Stating how, yani, and among you are those who die and others who are brought back to the worst time of life. Uh, so that after having knowledge, they know nothing at all. Uh, so, when they die, this is the, the verse speaks about this, and among you are those who die and others are brought back to the worst time of life, so that after having had knowledge, they had now know nothing. Yet any, at the end of their life, they reach to a point of time that they become like how they were when they were first born into this world. May Allah protect us. So that's why we see a lot of people at old age, we they, they forget things, you know, not that they want to be like that. They lose their, their strength, their energy. And we can see this in our parents. They were not as strong as they used to be. Um, so we shouldn't burden them. We should, in fact, take care of them. Uh, a lot of our elders, if we see, they, they were once, you know, people who were strong, they led communities, etc. But uh, when they reach the, the end of their life, yeah, the body just gives up. Because that's what the body does. It will give up. The body is not meant to be created forever. It is meant only for this dunya. And when we are resurrected later, we'll talk about that when we reach there, is that how our bodies will be, what, what kind of bodily form we will take. So these are all important knowledge. So they will take time. And the 60, 70 years that we are now on this earth, we're not going to be worried whether it's going to be blue chips uh, which stocks you're going to involve or not share, not money or... these are things of dunya Good, go and do what you want to do but what we're saying is that what are your, what about your stocks for the hereafter what are you going to bring what knowledge are you, is going, are you, going, are you equipped with in this journey eh? so our problem with this dunya will either help us in the hereafter or it will not this knowledge that we have in this dunya will either be beneficial for us in the hereafter or it will not. And we hope that it, is, it will be. Yeah. This is the dua of the Prophet O oh Allah, give me knowledge which is beneficial. And there's a lot of things that we should do in, to avoid uh, losing this at old age. Number one, ibadah. Jangan lepaskan ibadah. And I've seen this in my own jama'ah. Many of the seniors I see, mashallah, they worship more fervent than the younger ones. They are more fervent at worship than the younger ones. We had, you know, when we did 100 rakaats, and uh, for this for Sha'ban, I was motivated by the, by the seniors because I wasn't motivated by the younger ones as much. You can see when I said another 20, the older ones were like, okay. The younger ones, ha, huh, 20, lagi 20. Uh, lagi 20. Well, if you see the elder ones, okay, let's do it yeah, because they have nothing to lose. We elder ones, have, the younger ones, because there's Netflix, um, what now, Prime, all these kind of other things. So they got more they're very busy <laughs> with the thing. <laughs> you know, the older ones go like, okay, I've been there, then they watched everything really. All the Korean drama series that based there because it's all about losing that child and finding the child back into a jet uh, Tamil movies, which I always watch, it's all about one man fighting 20, 30. Hindi movies are now becoming more like Bollywood, so they're becoming more Mak Saleh. So this dunya we've seen, finish. What more do you want to see? Shopping, almost the same things. What else is there? Uh, so then when we have opportunities, number one, Ibadah, because this will help us in old age. And I have people who were very tired when they come, but when they leave, the place of like our Khanka, etc., or places that you know um, that reminds them of worship, they go like, okay, now I got back my energy. Yeah. And so it is really important that we find a community of worshippers, and which is clearly missing in Singapore. Clearly missing in Singapore because now I mean we've gone from a yeah, any from twenty rakaats to eight rakaat, and mind you, all the four madhab. All the former the hut agree that Taraweh is 20. 
all the four madhabs because of one hadith, one hadith that says about eight rakat, we take that one. All the four madhabs agree that it is 20. What do we have to lose, my friend? It's only an hour. If we take al hakum al downwards, and then on, you know, 15 Ramadan onwards, first rakat, after that, downwards. Inshallah, we can do it. Use this time for worship because we don't know how we'll be <laughs> when we are at old age. When we are at that age. So, worship Allah. Uh, I have not attained khushu. It's fine. Just worship. Oh. Uh, but don't be a worshipper which is ignorant. Yeah, any a worshipper that does not know how to worship, but just worship. So we need to know our ins and outs of worship. What are the ahkam, what are the rulings of worship, etc. So in terms of fiqh ibadah, belajarlah. Uh, seek knowledge of fiqh ibadah. When, when we're asking you to take the Arabic language, when we're asking you to take complex things, just how to do fiqh ibadah. And that will aid you on how to worship Allah. And that will help us in that time when we're very old and then Allah will take back all this knowledge. You know, what is left now is just that, that fervent worship in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that covers everything. Ibadah, the life of ibadah is everything. That's why the first assess of tariqah that your sheikh must train you in and the sheikh is not about solving just... Sometimes people see the sheikhs of tariqah as only as people who solve problems, eh? Ta'asala, part of their work is that when the Sheikh of Tariqah is supposed to train you in ibadah, worship. The months, the time, the days. How do you approach Allah? How do you beseech to Allah? And then when you are fervent and you continuously do this, then hopefully at the end, may Allah give us that permission through the ibadah, with the blessings of the ibadah, we will not be losing this uh, knowledge. May Allah make us increase our ibadah as we age, inshallah. <clears throat> then that you attain full strength and then that you became old. Though some among you die before and that you reach an appointed term that you may perhaps understand. May Allah give us that understanding that when we reach that age and then our when our physical self is not as strong, <clears throat> Then, uh, may Allah, then we realize, we start to realize how much time we have wasted, actually. How much time we have actually wasted in worrying about things that really doesn't matter at the end of the day. But when we are presented with the opportunity to be close to Allah, we choose to worry and to be anxious and not to be close. So even, and this is where we should be skillful with our worship. And so remember, we had the talk about skillful means. So how can we apply this is that we do not work with stress. I keep reminding this. Having faith is not about working with stress. So we have the tension around us. Around you can be tension. But the tension must not be within you. If as long as you are able to keep the tension outside of you and not within you, then are we being very skillful with our life. We are mastering ourselves through the opportunities in life, through the different uh, <clears throat> knowledge that we have. We're creative enough to apply what dua, etc., etc., to the guidance that we receive. Then, inshallah, we're mastering our own self. That means you, uh, you are making your nafs better, making your nafs. Uh, more aware, awakened about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His closeness and His power. And so this is really important, inshallah. And there are many more verses relating to this, which you can have a look, inshallah. In this second life, people move from the state of childhood to puberty, then youth to young adulthood and maturity to seniority. <clears throat> and then to such this cryptitude and senility as God may will, all in accordance with what God has said in his book. So, at the end of it, my friend, what will go through is your roh, the spirit. How are we preparing our roh? 
So we have childhood, number one. So when we're age, at the age of childhood, the main things that we need to be educating our, our children, Qira'atul Qur'an, and who Allah is in the Prophet Wasallam, and always bring them in the company of good people. It was simple. Through that, they will learn good etiquettes. So it's not about just teaching them, but bringing them in the company of these people. Then they will realize these are the people that I should be with, that I can identify myself with. Eh? But sadly, we, we do this. Sometimes we hide our religious identity just to ourselves. Or oh, only I am uh, religious. My children, I leave them. Later when they grow big, they decide, nah, mana boleh gitu? As for now, already, <clears throat> they cannot decide, which means you have the responsibility to decide for them, which means you must decide for them. When they grow big, then if they don't decide the right decision, it becomes your sin because you did not guide them. And on, But if from young age, you have been guiding them, bringing them to good places, etc., etc., and if at old age, they decided to do something else, then it is not your fault anymore. Because after 21 is very difficult to change. After 21 is very difficult. So we have this time from one from zero to seven. Zero means already in the time of and the conceivement, when the child is already conceived, we must already make the child very attached to sacred places with sacred people of Awliya Allah Sadiqin and Rasul Sallallahu The Holy Quran, the Sharia, the prayers, etc. Make them Feel it even when they're in their wombs, in your wombs. Eh? So childhood is that. And then it, how then do you prepare your children after that is to go into puberty. That is where the knowledge of Fardu'ain comes in. Because after that, the child would be taken in terms of his or her actions will be taken into deeds. Whether this is a deed or is a sin, the angels will already be writing. And for that reason, we must educate our children at the appropriate age when they are about to reach uh, puberty. So number one, we teach the children until they reach a point that they are they are able to know within right and wrong. After that is the age of puberty. <clears throat> so there are people who reach mumayis, that means they know right and wrong, even before they reach puberty. There are people, they reach puberty first, and then they reach mumayis. It is the, the duty of the parents to be educating and nurturing. So education is a very secular word. Right? I think in Islam, tarbiyah here means more of nurturing your child. Yeah? Nurturing your child, spending time, giving your child proper tawajjah. You need proper focus. Proper focus. Giving your child proper focus until yeah, the, the imprint leaves, is left on the child until they grow big, inshallah. And that becomes a way that parenting is not just through uh, oh, I've read that book about you know raising successful millionaire kids who drive their own Maseratis by the age of eight. Or oh, I've read that book that raises you know a successful CEO. Or oh, I've read that book that raises my children to be the best scientists. Tetapi, but then they are not able to they are not able to understand their own anger, their own arrogance, their own greed. All this, that means they function on greed, they function on arrogance, they function on all of this. May Allah protect us and our children. So um, the way we see parenting has to change. You cannot find this in the parenting fair. Uh, these are something that we need to find from the life of our great scholars and ulama and the life of our Prophet wasallam. And we need to create that environment at home uh, even from conceivement until puberty. Yeah? So then after when they reach puberty, they must understand what is their boundaries as a person. But maybe before puberty, okay lah. But then after puberty, they must understand their boundaries, what they can do, what they cannot do. Uh, with Allah, boundaries with Rasul, boundaries with their parents, with their brothers and sisters. How is their living condition going to be uh, after they've reached puberty? And that means brother and sister cannot stay together in the same room. All these kind of things. Uh, 
It's so important so that they understand what is the use of their sexual organs. This is all knowledge. And then everything is done with ibadah and ta'ah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So childhood, eh, raising the child to be, eh, understanding puberty. And this day and age, with whatever that is going on in our mobile phones, uh, all the more we need to yeah, and take care of our our children and what they are doing with their screens. This is an added thing about parenting this day and age. So uh, I, I I highly encourage uh, for parents to be to be understanding media in this day and age. So I mean Neil Postman when I was younger, um, there's a few books about by Neil Postman. Some of the, his concepts are quite interesting because. In order to understand the secular age, it's good to know what the some of uh, the conservatives, uh, Westerners, are also thinking about. So Neil Postman wrote a book about TV. Back then it was TV. Lah. Amusing ourselves to death, um, talking about TV and how television has made learning fun. And because of that, we shy away from road learning, yani the way of learning through memorization. So everything must be learned. Everything must be fun. Tak fun, tak nak belajar. You know, if it's not fun, I don't want. It's not tak boleh. So uh, that is good as well. Then he has, he wrote another book called The Disappearance of Childhood as well. And I think by now that book is probably about 40 years old, 30 years old, but it's still very relevant. Another another good book I, I highly recommend, and we're planning to do a book club on it, uh, or class on it. It's called The Narcissism Epidemic. Uh, narcissism epidemic is written by about three authors uh, and um, it's very a very good book that talks about how our day and age because of materialism and how we have actually made our children to be very narcissistic without us knowing so these are some important readings as well to understand the times and how do we navigate in these times using the tools that has been given to us by our great ulama and our great scholars as well and so how can we then navigate around this? How can we nurture our children properly? What do we need to do? What do we need to learn for ourselves as well? What do we need to equip ourselves so that we can bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And like how the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was kept pure because of the tarbiyah of the hunafa, we too must inherit this from our teachers so that our lineages are also kept pure not because of our ethnicity, but because of our iman. So they, they inherit this, they continue this way. So they can say, I've learned this from my father who taught me that this, 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 this. He learned this from his teacher and he taught him this, 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 this. And his teacher have learned it from his teacher or his teacher's father, etc. Until it goes up to Sayyidina Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is the, the way that we take care. Because if not... Then shaitan will come and they will say, I am your teacher, not your parents. I will teach you my way, not the way of Sayyidina Rasul, not the way of the awliya. I will tell you what is best for you. Uh, when that happens, habislah. Allah selamatkan anak-anak kita and our future generation, inshallah. So I think we'll stop here today, inshallah. We'll continue the rest, inshallah, tomorrow. Um, I hope to be back home by, uh, by then, inshallah. Eh? So all good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If not, it is from my own self. I hope these uh, lessons, uh, an hour, an hour and a half, have been beneficial. And if it has been, please make dua for us. And also, if uh, if you like, you can also contribute to the Khanqa and Saniya through our pay now, accounts 8668. 2295, I repeat 8668 2295, and you can do a pay now. No amount is too small. And um, inshallah, we hope that you will also join us for our upcoming Badr Majlis and all the other Majlis that are coming up, inshallah. And um, our, our, uh, our sister who is working behind our IG has been regularly as well putting up previous videos from last year's uh, readings. So if you have found them useful, do share them and you can check it out more on our YouTube. And I hope that these sharings are useful, inshallah, for your life of Iman and Taqwa and for the life of Iman and Taqwa for your family as well. And uh, may Allah 
accept all of our ibadah, inshallah, accept all of our fasting, accept all of our sadaqah, accept all of our taraweeh, wa kemulal, and all of our du'as, inshallah, and with this be our end be good, inshallah, with the blessings of Imam al-Haddad, and the Sahib, the Sahib al-Kitab, and Sahib al-Ratib, and the blessings of all of our mashaykh in our silsila, and the blessings of Holy Prophet sallallahu and may these blessings be also upon our family, our parents, our brothers and sisters, Muslim and Muslimat, أخر كلام من يا سلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام ورحمة الله.